The following program may contain adult language and mature subject matter and does not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Reality Radio 101, its advertisers and sponsors, or its listening audience. Listener discretion is strongly advised. Welcome to the Canadian Cigar Scene with your hosts, Julian Luke and Kevin Newell, right here on Reality Radio 101. To contact us live right now, send us an email, realityradio101 at yahoo.com. And now, your hosts of Canadian Cigar Scene, Kevin Newell and Julian Luke. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Canadian Cigar Scene. Sitting here beside my host, co-host, Julian Luke. How are you, Ju? I'm doing good, Kev. Just uh, glad to be back down here in the studio with our friend Gary, uh, taking good care of us. Yeah, it's kind of strange. This is, uh, this is uh, we're, we're tackling, conquering new ground here. Uh, we're sitting here, two people in the studio tonight. Typically, there's like four or five people in here. Or, you know, hangers on, you know, groupies, all that sort of shit. But, <laughs> no, no, it's just other guests. But uh, tonight we're going to try something a little different. We're doing a, uh, we're going to go right into our guest tonight. We're, uh, we have a phone-in interview tonight with uh, the one, the only, Paul Stulak from uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Paul, we got you on the line? You got it. You got me on the line. How's it going, guys? Paul, how you doing, brah? I'm well. I'm well. Uh, it's good to hear from you again. It was fantastic to have you into the sh- into the uh, shop. Uh, what was it last week? Last week? Shit, time last flies, week eh? Was, uh, yeah, a week ago, uh, probably today. I think it was. It was a pleasure to be there, guys. How was your whirlwind tour? Whirlwind tour. Well, any tour that starts with victory cigars has got to be a good one, right? <laughs> You're a beauty. That's awesome, uh, man. I had That's, a blast. I had uh, a blast. Great uh, group of guys there at your shop. Oh, uh, well, thanks very where, much. Where else did you get to go? Where else did I get to go? Yeah. I went all through Toronto, all the uh, all kinds of bars, and uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, went went to uh, several cigar stores, uh, smoking cigar, and uh, went to Fozzie's store on Young Street, and et cetera, et cetera, a whole bunch of them. Awesome, so a good, great. awesome, a good bunch of guys. And actually, Trey had his big uh, uh, 18th anniversary celly last uh, last Thursday night, didn't he? Did you make it yeah, out to that? That's, that's what I, I attended that event actually, and uh, I'm going to be uh, back in. Tip- September or October to do an event with Trey. So oh, perfect, I'll be, perfect. I'll be back doing the circuit in a month or so. Oh, good. Well, we can do, uh, I think we had talked, uh, just to let the listeners know, I mean, we uh, we finally decided that we are going to pull the trigger and get Paul's cigars in the shop. Um, so, you know what, well, we had him in uh, last week and we, we did a soft launch, but I'd love to do, uh, do a, a serious launch of your cigar and uh, get things rolling with a bang and let everybody know on social media. So if you're listening out there, uh, get ready because we're going to have a shaker at Victory Cigars when Paul comes back. You guys just say when. Absolutely. Perfect, man. I love it. So, Paul, tell me, you know, let's go back a little bit in your history here. So uh, basically how things started for you was uh, you, uh, you're a retailer, correct? That's correct. Retailer for about 20 years now. 20 years. Christ, you, you, what are you, when did you start, when you were six? <laughs> Honestly. I was in my 20s, and I started with a, a kiosk in a mall that was no bigger than a china cabinet that you would see in a dining room, basically. Really? And it was in the center of the mall, and I listened to a water fountain for uh, 12, 13 hours a day next to me. That sounds like some sort so, of a torture, t- torture chamber right there, eh? Um, it, uh, I paid my dues. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So, how, how many years did you work in the mall before you went to? Uh... I, was, I was there for uh, about two years, and then I opened up a second location in the middle of that, and then ended up in a brick and mortar store. Uh, 
two or three years after that, and then moved to the current spot that I'm in about 12, 13 years ago. Explain to the listeners what your current spot is now, Paul. Current spot is Smoke on the Water at Bishop's Landing, downtown Halifax, and it's called Smoke on the Water because it's on the water. <laughs> kind of there's self. a little bit of a funny story to that because I couldn't come up with the name for the shop, and the landlord was getting frustrated because they wanted to put up signs in the windows. Okay. So the lady who was doing the signage, she actually just said, she goes, look, I'm putting up whatever, and then when you come up with the name, you let me know. And she said, coming soon, you'll be able to smoke on the water. And I nice. said, oh, I don't think that's a tagline. That's the name of the shop. Wow, that's very cool. It's funny how things work out, eh? Mm. <laughs> Has she ever come back on you for royalties? <laughs> no, but every second phone call, when I, we pick up the phone, somebody's singing smoke on the water. Oh, no, no <laughs> doubt, eh? No doubt. Yeah. What do you, uh, so you're at home right now? I'm at home right now in my little cigar room, yeah. What, what are you enjoying right now? I'm smoking a white blinding light torpedo. Uh, one of my favorites, one of the one of the ones that we picked up in the shop. Yeah, fantastic blend. Maybe you can go through. Um, maybe you can go through what you have in your uh, in your line. Sure, I'd love to. I started in 2011 with the uh, classic line, which is consisted of five cigars: the Angel, Ghost, Phantom, Skull, and Cross in five different shapes, available in Maduro and natural. Actually, it was only available in natural. And then for the Big Smoke in 2011, when we did that, we launched the uh, Maduro. Uh, about a year later, launched the uh, Red Screaming Sun, Black Midnight Fire, and White Blinding Light. And those were made in Miami, uh, classics in Esteli, Nicaragua. Okay. And then shortly after that came the uh, an extension to the classic line, which was Lord, which came about because it was uh, the last name of a guy who was encouraging me and begging me to do a smaller size in the classic line for their shop in Albany, New York. So basically, he uh, was begging me to do that. I put it out, asked him what his name suggestions were. He gave me a bunch of names, and I said, I think you're missing the obvious, which is your last name, Lord. It kind of goes with skull, cross. And yeah, no theme. doubt. No doubt. I'm sensing a theme so here. What's that? I'm sensing a theme here. Uh, there was, but then uh, then we kind of kind of went off in a different direction and did the no dress code, which was done about a year after those ones, which is around 2013, mm -hmm. which is basically taking the cigars right off the table and the rolling table and boxing them and putting them in newspaper and sending them off directly to the retailer for the customer to either smoke fresh or to age. Wow, very cool. Now, would that be is that available in Canada? That isn't available in Canada. Logistically, it's a little bit of a tough one because they are coming off the table. And as we know, in transport, cigars do change, and then they need to sit for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we haven't really developed a system for that one so that the customer gets the true experience out of it. So, so really, uh, so you have a lot of your cigars right now are made in, in uh, rolled in Miami, correct? We were pretty much doing everything except for some of the classics in Miami. We have, in the last couple of weeks, actually, literally that, that recently, we have completely relocated to uh, Esteli, Nicaragua. Guillermo, who's my master blender and runs the factory, is the nephew of Don Pepin. Don Pepin grew, outgrew his factory for obvious reasons yeah, no a doubt. while back and uh, has kind of uh, taken uh, us under his wing, and we're using that factory. Wow, that, that must be... And we're go the only cigar that will be made is, is, is some of the, uh, the red and some of the white will just still be done in Miami. But everything's going to shift to Nicaragua just to be a little bit more uh, hands-on, larger production, up to 40 rollers at a time. And we'll also be able to uh, be a little more, well, quite a bit more competitive in pricing, particularly in the Canadian market, which is obviously very sensitive to a cigar that originates at an expensive Cost. Yeah, I think people. Uh, you know, it's it's. I think it's difficult for the retailer to sort of figure this out. But uh, you know, uh, when you're producing cigars in Miami, you deal with a lot, a uh, lot more of a tax, uh, a tax hit than you would if it came out of a factory in Nicaragua. Correct. Well, the, the, there's there's that, but you also have packaging expenses and you have labor costs, which you know it, it, it's not uh, it's not anyone's fault. It's just the way it is. But mm -hmm. everything adds up, and then in Canada, it becomes percentage uh what do i how do i say that ratio wise it becomes even worse because you've got percentages of customs excise duties and tobacco taxes on a higher amount yeah it kind of and goes out of the stratosphere pretty yeah, quickly as we all know it's exponential at that point isn't it 
that's the word I was looking yeah, for. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, so uh, curious, uh, how's your uh, saturation been in the Canadian market so far? Uh, uh, it's just beginning, actually. Yeah. Just uh, sort of uh, used uh, someone else for uh, probably the first two or three years uh, on a small scale. And now we've uh, lined up full distribution for uh, pretty much all of Canada. There's only a few pockets that it uh, won't be distributed in, and even those we're working on. So the guys from Noob Cigars are going to be distributing, distributing them across Canada, and that's going to happen within the next probably 30 days. Wow, that's exciting. That's exciting news, and it's Very good to... Exciting. Yeah, Very I, exciting. I, yeah, so I mean... I, I like those guys because they, they have a small catalog, so I wanted to you know be with somebody who I wasn't buried in a catalog yeah. or a large portfolio. They yeah, that's right. Focus, focus on them. Well, that's good. Yeah, they're good. The uh, good guys there too, as well. So, I mean, I'm sure you're going to get good representation, and uh, and uh, you know, let's saturate the market up here and get your cigars into the shops. I've I've uh, been enjoying them for the last week now, and boy, oh boy, you got some you got some great stuff in your stuff in your repertoire there. It's fantastic. Thank you. Um, as far as the you know, as far as the United States now, is that a difficult uh, is that a difficult market to you know to adjust to as well? I think it's a, it's a difficult market uh, for all the challenges that I had. I felt very fortunate um, from the first time that I went to the first trade show and we won the best new exhibitor our first year in Vegas. I, I was very fortunate that I, I, I kind of got accepted to some extent from day one, and I don't mean that there wasn't ups and downs along the way, but as from a from a perspective of being accepted as a brand, I felt very, very proud of uh, what had happened in a short period of time. So... You know, Sorry, I, go ahead. I yeah. So I'm, I, you know, I just uh, my mind goes back and just looking. I know you had some fantastic ratings over the course of the last little while for some of your cigars as well. That's really got to be a boost for you as well, right? It's a great feeling because you know you, you you do hear about all the and you read about some you know some of the brands that get slaughtered and stuff. I can truly say, knock on wood, that you know we haven't been slaughtered yeah. by anybody. Yeah. yeah, it's been fairly positive, and some of the big publications have you know done some nice uh, pieces on on the business and stuff. So well, on, uh, I'm very I'm very fortunate in that respect. On that note, we had a great little conversation about uh, about a gentleman who uh, who uh, owns the uh, the Rob Report. And uh, something uh -huh. something pretty cool happened to you there, didn't it? Something very cool happened with Rob Report. I met the guys from Rob Report, or actually the owner and a few of the guys at the first trade show, and they took interest right away. They just thought it was a cool thing. So basically, they did a small little blurb about us after the trade show. What year was that? And then it was that was in 2011 during the first trade show, and okay. then uh, they they wrote about us here and there, and then all of a the sudden they do their annual uh, ultimate uh, gifts for the holiday issue mm -hmm. a couple years later, and I got a phone call and it said, uh, if you're able to get us a box of cigars here for a photo shoot for tomorrow, we'd be happy to write about your cigar. <laughs> wow. It's going to be expensive because you have to overnight them to us. So while she's talking, I'm running to the FedEx. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Oh, my God. So you must have been losing got, it. We got them in the mail, and they, they uh, put us right alongside all, you know, the, 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 the people that I look up to in the industry. I mean, from, you know, the Fuentes, the Davidoffs, the Padrones, the, uh, you know, the Pete Johnson, Tatuajes, my father's. So here I was, right alongside these guys. So that was a that was a great, great feeling. Wow, what a boost, eh? You know what? And you have, uh, I mean, you must have relationships with a lot of these a lot of these guys as well, correct? Oh yeah, you get to know everybody. It's a great business for camaraderie. And yeah. Everybody loves to hang out, and smoke cigars, and talk. I've, I've always said I have no idea what guys at refrigerator conventions talk about. <laughs> Because, you know, you go to a cigar convention and everybody's just got a common interest and everybody wants to go out until 4 or 5 in the morning and, and talk about them. So oh, yeah. uh, i, I got to give credit to people who are in any other business because there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing on earth like this business where you you're sitting around smoking cigars and talking about something you love. Absolutely. Yeah, it is uh, it's quite the camaraderie. Could you imagine going to an insurance, uh, insurance convention? Oh, my God. There you go. Even better than my refrigerator <laughs> Oh, <analogy>. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> is there is, is there any yeah really is there anybody that you can sort of uh, point a you know put a finger on as far as like who's been instrumental in uh, in helping you build uh, build your career you know whether it be in Canada or U.S. or throughout the world? Well, there, there's been there's been so many people over the years that if I was to even even start, then I would not be able to finish because I would be leaving people out. So, but I have to I have to give you know special uh, special acknowledgement to Guillermo. When him and I met, it was just kind of it was just meant to be. You know, right away, I just felt like this is home, and we've we've worked together, and we 
gone through the ups, the downs, and uh, we have a very similar vision. I, so, yeah, you have to have that, you know, I have to, it has to click, right? You have to have that relationship. And I've had that, you know, I think Joe and I have sat here with numerous cigar makers, you know, throughout the times on this show, and they've always had that sort of, uh, that click with somebody and it's, it's worked and it's, and it's allowed the business to just, uh, you know, just, uh, move in directions. They had no idea they could go. Well, it's a night and day difference. I mean, than when you're dealing with someone that it's just not working with. And I, I did, I did get into that when I first started, I was, you know, it just, it just wasn't meant to be. Mm-hmm. And all it was was struggles and challenges and headaches. Yeah. And then when you find home, you can kind of focus on the passion that you have and putting out the best product that you can as opposed to avoiding headaches. Yeah. Now, have you thought about branching? I'm not sure. Are you branched into Europe yet? Asia? Anything like that? Uh, we In Asia, yes. And also in Australia. Wow. Which, uh, Australia is just doing tremendous with it. That's a really, really great feeling. Uh a lot, a lot of supporters there. So uh, is that right, eh? Between, yeah, yeah, and they've got a ridiculous uh, system as well as far as laws and taxes. But they, the the smokers are like Canadians; we don't allow it to get to us. That's right. Yeah, you keep just, pushing forward. That's right. You find a way. I think they've gone completely. Uh, they go, you know, blank on boxes and everything. If I'm not correct, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, you can't of... even have labels on the cigars. So you're basically <laughs> truly just. People are relying on uh, the, the, the manufacturer is relying on his cigar. Yeah, packaging plays a very small role in Australia, to be honest, at this point. Wow, and, and I mean your packaging is fantastic. Your bands, I don't know who does the artwork for your uh, for your bands and for your cigar boxes, but whoever's doing that needs a good pat on the pat on the back for it, that. It, it was it was a designer who actually kicked me out of his office because he got fed up with me uh, tweaking and making <laughs> changes, and he just looked at me and he said, "Get out, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Pay me and get out. <laughs> Control freak, leave me but, alone." Uh, <laughs> I have a new cigar coming out uh, soon, and that's going to be a more traditional style packaging and uh, the, the tobacco blend itself. And uh, someone very, very, uh, very well known in the industry who does some pretty uh, big names out there is uh, doing the label. So these are going to be something even on another level. No. They're going to be, I, if I don't do say so myself, it's going to be spectacular. Oh, we look forward to getting that on the market. Hopefully, yeah, obviously in Canada as well, I hope. Absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. I've always wanted to be in the Canadian market. It just it just wasn't coming together. But I had always had emails from people saying, "How come I can? You know, you've got cigars in the United States, but you don't have cigars in your own home country." I love the United States of America, and I love my own country. But it just it wasn't up to me, it's, as you know. In this country, everything goes through distributors, mm-hmm. and there's red tape and taxes upon taxes. So. Correct. Now. Timing is right. Yeah, that's right. So, I'm just curious, what sort of input do you have in like blending, uh, you know, you know, sizes, all that sort of stuff? Is that all your call? That's all 100 percent my call. Yeah, absolutely. You, I, I translate my vision to Guillermo, and he's the guy who's able to uh, take that vision and my ridiculous ideas and thoughts, and and put them, you know, into a, a, a tangible product in front of me. To say yes or no, he obviously uh, obviously gives his two cents, and I and I I take that two cents because he's very knowledgeable. Yeah, yeah. But now, I mean, where does you? I uh, I guess just smoking cigars for the last twenty years uh, allows you to gain a palate and uh, you know give you a, sort of an idea of where you want to go and you know what areas you want to change and what you want to switch up and you know. It's, I was actually smoking cigars for longer than twenty years because I was very young when I started and uh, was kind of like a. Well, I won't even say the age because we probably don't want to touch on that. <laughs> but uh, how, how did you start smoking I, I, cigars? I, I I'm curious. Had a passion for cigars. I'm curious. That, I'm curious. How did you start smoking cigars? I, I, you can kind of see it on my video. If you hit me up on social media, I yeah. have a video that tells my story. And if you look at that video, you'll see the General Lee from the Dukes of Hazard, the car going over, uh, doing a jump. Yep. And it really, and it really comes from the show Dukes of Hazard. I think is probably my first vivid memory and that comes from boss hog sitting there smoking a cigar and i always thought it was cool and for uh christmas one one year i got a toy set that came with a general lee car uh-huh. a plastic cowboy hat and a plastic cigar of all things <laughs> <laughs> That's i mean awesome. can you imagine that in 2015 they don't make toys like cigar. they used to <laughs> they would lose their you know, shit I mean, the, the, the only thing left would be like a, a, a 
to, to put a bottle of Jack Daniels or something <laughs> like that. That's right. I'll play one. Minute, oh, minute. that's that's awesome story. Great but way I to... to chew. I used to chew on that uh, plastic cigar. And that's, <laughs> like, I was very young at that age. See, I'm talking five, well, maybe not five, eight years old, I guess. Now it's now it says it's a choking hazard, correct? Yeah. yeah there you Drinking go. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, I know. They're brutal. Brutal. Well, you know what? What a great way to uh, to finish off our uh, our little interview here, Paul. You, you're a gracious uh, a gracious guest, and I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to uh, you know come back to us here and uh, it's just uh, give some stuff to our, our listenership. I really appreciate it. No, thank you guys. I really, really, truly appreciate it. You guys are doing great things, and shows like this is what's going to uh, be the, the future of this industry. If you want to know the truth, in my in my opinion. Oh, I appreciate so keep that. Keep doing what your guy you guys are doing as well. Well, thank you. Thanks very much, Paul. And uh, and uh, hopefully winter won't be uh, a lo- it will be a long way away for you guys down east there, and it won't be too harsh for you. Okay. Doesn't make a difference inside a smoking room with Damn. a cigar lit. Damn straight, baby. Well, we look forward to coming coming back. You coming back to uh, Victory Cigars in Toronto area and uh, doing a serious launch of your cigars. We're gonna kick some ass, brother. Wouldn't miss it. I'll see you guys soon. All right, you take care, Paul. Take care, fellas. All right, bye bye. Everybody, Again, that was uh, Paul Stulak, everybody. Uh, smoke on the water in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, just a great guy, eh, you? Awesome guy. Yeah, awesome guy. Guy's just a beauty. Well, it looks like we've got to take a quick break here. I just want to let everybody know that you're listening to, listening to the Canadian Cigar Scene on Reality Radio. Jackie's Critters and Things is your reptile destination for unique reptiles and reptilian supplies. Come visit Jackie, affectionately known as the Dragon Lady of Bowmanville, at her one-of-a-kind reptilian store. Learn about reptiles, their care, and find out more about the reptilian world. Browse the wide selection of livestock, including lizards, snakes, and other reptiles. Find premium feeder supplies sure to satisfy your reptile's appetite, including crickets, silkworms, waxworms, superworms, and much, much more. Please check out the wide stock of supplies that will help you house and care for your reptile. Jackie's Critters and Things is conveniently located at 116 King Street West in Bowmanville, Ontario. For more information, please contact Jackie at 905 419 2006. That's 905 419 2006. Or go to Jackie's website at www.jackiescritters.synthesite.com. Remember, Jackie's Critters and Things for all of your reptilian needs. When you visit Peacock Lumber, you will step back in time to a place where purchasing wood products was simple, efficient, and pleasant. In our office, you can view our large selection of moldings and receive advice from knowledgeable sales staff. Once you have decided on your order, you can pick up your materials in our drive through yard or utilize our delivery service. For pickups, take your vehicle out to our traditional lumber yard where someone is always there to assist you. If you are accustomed to purchasing wood products at a box store, you will be impressed by the variety, selection, and quality of products that we offer and the ease in which you get your vehicle loaded and get you on your way. Peacock Lumber is conveniently located on eight acres in central Oshawa. It was started in 1939 by Victor Peacock and remains family owned and operated. If you need quality wood products for your renovation, please call us at 905-725-4744. That's 905-725-4744. Or for a full list of products and prices, go to www.peacocklumber.ca. Come to Peacock Lumber first to get the price, selection, quality, and service that you expect. The following program may contain adult language and mature subject matter and does not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Reality Radio 101, its advertisers and sponsors, or its listing audience. Listener discretion is strongly advised. Something 
something went wrong. Welcome back to Canadian Cigar Scene with your hosts, Jillian Luke and Kevin Newell. Right here on Reality Radio 101. To call us right now live, dial 905-725-1907. Toll free, 1-866-905-7325. Worldwide, 1-866-656-5477. Send us an email, realityradio101 at yahoo.com. Something's gonna shatter somewhere. And now, right back to your host, Kevin Newell and Julian Luke. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, welcome back, Ju. Hey, good to be back. Yeah, that was a, what a, what a beauty, eh? Oh, he's an incredible guy. Yeah. Like, when you think of what he's done from starting a store to suddenly being in Central America with a business, it's, it's just entrepreneurship yeah. at its finest. Yeah, the guy's a beauty, that's for sure. Yeah, great guy. Um, again, thanks. We look forward to having him back in the shop. We'll do a serious launch of that cigar. Oh, yeah. It's Paul Stulek Cigars. Uh, looking at uh, listenership again. Man, we are, uh, we're kicking ass, man. Every, every week we're gaining listenership. Uh, you know, Mexico, Russia, Switzerland, Uruguay, Germany, Japan, uh, you know, Canadian and Americans. Thank you very much for everybody for uh, tuning in and listening to this uh I don't know what you want to call it, but listening to us two jack wagons. Anyway. And don't forget Oshawa. I think our friends Ed and Doug might be listening in tonight too. Maybe maybe Adam might be in there too. We yeah, can only we hope he's got his phone on uh, you know, mute or something like that, or it's not <laughs> working right now. But a uh, bunch of beauties in the hut too. So you guys are awesome. Uh, I guess it's time for uh, cigar events. Yeah, let's uh, let people know to maybe get a pencil so they can jot these things down. Get your pencils. School starting soon. Um uh, our feature cigar this weekend is a long weekend, baby. Woo-hoo. Last one of the summer. Oh, man, that sucks balls. Hey, you can, can you believe it? Absolutely. Where it the does. hell did that summer go? Jesus. Oh, well. Uh, this weekend, we're going to be featuring Hoyo de Nicaragua cigars. So, uh, you know, Hoyo Reds. One of my favorites is the uh, Antonio 1970 Robusto Grande. Oh, buddy. There's a there's a powerful stick there. Yeah, a lot of flavor in that. Yeah, looking forward to... Uh, to Put a few of those out the door, that's for sure. You guys love those cigars. Uh, even when we had one in the shop, what a beauty there, too, eh? I like Don Cherry. You like calling everybody a beauty. Hey. He's a beauty. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. See, I've only said that twice tonight, too. I'm really off the absolutely kick. Um, our second annual uh, S- October Cigar Fest is coming up September 19th. Tickets went on sale yesterday. This Woo! Is, this, is, this is, to me, is more favorite than Christmas at this point. Oh, buddy. Is it? A, it's a, that now. The, that's a shaker, baby. Now yeah, that's a real shaker. That's be a good, oh good yeah, time, good yeah. time. Beer, live, live music. Yep. Ma- Maple Suns. The Maple Suns are playing. To, Maple uh, Suns. Yep. Uh, we've got uh, Matt. We're, yeah, we're fl- we're actually flying in uh, the beer, the kegs of beer from Germany. Man, it doesn't get any better than that. Wanda's going to be doing all the uh, German fare for us. Great German food. We got Matt playing uh, a little oompa oh, for us. Box. Oh, buddy. Uh, what do we got for cigar for cigar scene happenings? What's going on? Well, a couple of things. Uh, first off, some congratulations to the fine folks at Havana House. Now, they're the people that bring all the Cuban cigars into Canada. They've got a brand new website at HavanaHouse.com. Did a really nice job on it. And uh, if you're looking to find a Cuban retailer, a Cuban cigar retailer in Canada, they have a section on that site where you can uh, look up and find out who the Havana specialists are. Secondly, the Rake Club. This organization is based out of Woodbridge, I believe. They're having their first annual golf tournament at Woodbine Golf Club on September 9th. Now, this is going to be a cigar-friendly event. The tickets are $250 a piece. You can contact Lou Chardulo. He's at pinnaclefinancial47 at gmail.com, and he can get you more details. So that email address, again, for Lou is pinnacle. Financial47 at gmail.com. And it uh, looks like it's going to be a really good event with the Rate Club Golf Tournament. Yeah, I think they're almost sold out on that, too. So yeah, yeah. That's going to be uh, and, oh, and that's a very cigar-friendly event, too. Mm-hmm. Um, Village Cigar Company presents Gurkha Cigars in downtown Burlington. Now, that's going to be on Saturday, September 5th. Uh, check these guys out. They've got a store in Burlington, one in Oakville as well. They always put on a good party. So get down and get yourself your Gurkha Cigars. And who are we giving a shout out to this week, Ju? Oh, this week we got the one and only Walter Di Battista at the Humidor Cigar Company in Woodbridge. The beauty of beauties. <laughs> oh, he's the beauty of beauties. <laughs> so the Humidor Cigar Company, if you haven't been up there, absolutely York's best re- uh, York region's best selection of cigars. Over 3,000 varieties from Cuba, Honduras, Nicaragua, the Dominican. Walter knows just a lot about cigars, and he's a really good guy. Uh, he's at... 
3883 Regional Road 7 in Vaughan. If you want to look them up on the web, if you're in that neck of the woods or if you're traveling to the Vaughan area, go on the World Wide Web to humidorcigarco.com. And lastly, we better give a quick shout out to the fine folks at uh, Alec Bradley. We're going to be heading there later on tonight because word has it that they have a major coup that they are going to be bringing Epic and Kristoff cigars into Canada for the very first time. I don't know if you've heard any more details than I have. No, it's, it looks like it's going to happen. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty stoked for this. I know we've had a few samples from my PCPR and stuff, but... You know, to bring these cigars to Canada, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, too. And we're going to try and see if we can maybe get, you know, a representative from that company, if they're there tonight, to uh, talk to us a little bit, maybe have it on a future show. Yeah, I think there's a Canadian uh, twist to that, too. I think uh, the guys from Epic uh, have a Canadian uh, background to them as well. Well, then they need to be on our educational Canadian cigar scene show then, don't they? Absolutely. All right, what's happening? We what do we got? We better uh, times a ticking here. Uh, holy, holy we, better, we better figure out what's going on next week. Well, it looks like we may have. Uh, we ha- I'm positive we've wrangled Jerry Hartman into coming in on the show next He's week. He's elusive. Yeah, he is. What I mean, the guy's never. He never works. So I mean, I know Iceland. He's up north. Uh, he's he's in, on the golf course. Oh my god, the guy's. Oh. I can't. I can't even imagine. But a he'll tell you he's working all day long. Having a lifestyle like that, I tell you. But uh, if you know what, you can go to uh, www.cigarscene.ca to check out our upcoming and past guests as well. Yeah. Are and, these and, are and, these uh, are these past shows available on the yeah? On the web with too? the exception of last week, I'm behind one show. Mia culpa. Uh, getting the kids back to school has been crazy. Mm-hmm. We should tell people too that uh, Jerry Hartman, if you don't know, is the owner of Cigar Studio mm-hmm. right on uh, Willingdon Boulevard, I think it is in Toronto, just off Avenue Road. Yeah. Great shop he's got too. Um, looks like it's a wrap for this week, eh? Holy crap! Where'd that time go? You know, I'm, I'm we just having so much fun with this stuff. Gary's giving you the nod. Maybe it should be another fifteen minutes. <laughs> George is behind him, saying, "I'm my, I'm on next." So get the hell out, okay? Uh, just to let everybody know, you can email us at uh, radio at victorycigars.ca. Uh, of course, uh, follow us on Twitter. Check out Horatio at Victory Cigars, or you can check mine out at uh, I'm Victory Garman. Uh, obviously, our Facebook page as well, Victory Cigars, and uh, always follow Jill on our Instagram page as well. Um, just again, thanks again to Paul Stulak, uh, just a great guy, and uh, we look forward to hearing from uh, from uh, from Jerry next week. Uh, again, thanks everybody for listening, and we will see you next week. It's time to have a cigar. You've been listening to Canadian Cigar Scene with your hosts, Julian Luke and Kevin Newell, right here on Reality Radio 101.